Since most of the world has been transitioning to living and working at home over the past couple of years, this has inspired many to start their own podcasts. Whether by themselves or with friends, there are many different ways to record a podcast. If you're starting your own podcast, what's the best setup for you? In today's video, we'll cover which setup might be best for you. Stay tuned. What's going on folks, this is Jam Calpin of Calpin Creations with another video to help you to start making quality audio content on a budget. Whatever you're making, cost does not have to stop you from creating your next project. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the most common and popular ways to record and produce a podcast. But before we jump into the video, if you like the content here on this channel, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All right, let's get into it. The first and easiest and probably the cheapest way to go ahead and start getting into podcasting or to record your own podcast is by using your phone. All you need is a phone. Whether you're using headphones or just holding it up to your face, using a cell phone or a smartphone or whatever is perfect for solo type podcasts. Maybe some one-on-one -on -one interviews, especially if you're using Zoom or you know trying to record using the platform or a program like Zoom. But it's definitely for phones, are definitely the easiest way to record yourself and to produce your own podcast. With apps like Anchor and, and uh, websites like Anchor, you can record directly online and then publish and produce your podcast without having to do any editing at all. So the first way and really the cheapest way to do it is to use your phone. And again, you can put on headphones, whatever kind of headphones you have. And the mic that usually comes in those headphones is pretty good quality. But if you're trying to, um, if you're looking for some headphones, a good brand I would suggest is like AKG or even like Skull Candy. The next common setup that you, you've probably seen online and that people have, a lot of people have recommended is using a USB microphone. And a common USB microphone that most people use to get started in podcasting is called a Blue Yeti. USB microphones, this is a simple and affordable way to record to your computer or your laptop, which allows you to do a whole range of different types of podcasting setups. So whether it's a solo podcast or whether you're interviewing somebody or even large groups, if you're using Zoom or other online programs, maybe like StreamYard or things like that, having a USB microphone is a great way to get started. And um, it's a good foot in the door to allow you to get comfortable with what you're doing as a solo podcaster, but also it allows you to slowly venture out if you want to interview friends or family or interview special guests for your podcast. It's a, it's a great way to get started um, because it's affordable. You can get USB microphones, good ones of good quality for as low as like 30 bucks. Be careful with it though, because you can go on the Amazon and, you know, look for USB microphones and some of those microphones might be like six, seven dollars. Well, you'll probably get six or seven dollar kind of quality. And that's not really one, what you want to go for. So getting a USB microphone is a good way to get started in podcasting. The next popular setup for recording and producing a podcast is using a mic and audio interface, which is what I'm using right now. I'm using an MXL 990 microphone condenser microphone and a Focusrite Scarlett Solo. Using a USB mic in an uh, interface is very similar to if you were using a USB microphone. The pro or the, the better part about using an external microphone, XLR microphone that goes into audio interface is that the quality will be a lot better. This does allow you to record directly into your computer, which is great for when you're, after you've recorded, you can directly get into editing and producing your podcast so that you can share it with whoever you need to. Uh, online, you know, on Spotify, Anchor, or whatever, <laughs> Apple Podcasts. It's also a great transitioning point. So you can do solo podcast and solo content creating, or you can also have the same, very similar setup to the USB microphone by doing Zooms or using programs like Skype or StreamYard or things like that to interview multiple people at once. The thing is, getting a, an external microphone and an audio interface can be a little bit more expensive than a USB microphone but ultimately it offers higher audio quality um, for your podcast in the long run. Audio interfaces and mic bundles start around $230. So that can be a little pricey, um, but again, if you choose to make that investment, even if you're trying to get into like voiceover while you're doing podcasting, or even if you wanna do music, this is the perfect setup to get you going. It's, it's perfect and it's something that you can continue to use over time as you get better and better and increase your skills. So yeah, they can start at about $230. And depending on the brand and the type of microphone that you get, so on and so forth, it can get more and more expensive. <laughs> Another plus I would say to using an external microphone in a USB interface is that you can always get another microphone, which 
is so much better <laughs> than a USB microphone. If you get a USB microphone and you don't particularly like the sound, you have to go out and buy a whole new USB microphone, which could be change a lot of different stuff. But if you get an audio interface, you can buy a variety of different microphones. Like I have two different mics that I use currently for if I'm streaming online or if I'm producing this kind of content and podcast and I didn't have to go out and buy a whole new thing. Like the, the other mic that I, ha I have, it's probably less than 50 bucks, <laughs> but it does exactly what I need it to do. It offers you that versatility when you're using an external microphone and, and an audio interface. The next way that you can record a podcast, um, the setup that is used by a lot of people, and I would even say for like reporters or people who are doing in-person interviews is using a portable recorder, such as the Zoom H4n. And there are a lot of different portable recorders out there, a lot of different makes and uh, models. The cool thing about a portable recorder is the fact that it's portable. You can take it anywhere. <laughs> if you're doing a solo podcast that you want to go outside and record a solo podcast, you can just set up your portable recorder or, you know, use it while you're walking around and you will get really, really good quality audio compared to say you wanted to walk around with your cell phone. Your cell phone audio might be decent. It's going to be of good quality, but if you want really, really good quality, <laughs> you can invest in a um, portable recorder. Also, the plus of a portable recorder, it allows you to plug up multiple microphones and different types of microphones so that if you wanted to interview somebody in person, say you wanted to sit down and have coffee with somebody and you wanted to record that conversation, you can use the portable recorder without extra microphones or you can plug in microphones. So say you wanted like a lapel microphone to hook on to your guest, you can do that. And again, it's going to produce high quality audio, which is a, is just, you know, it's awesome that you can have that versatility. You can go around interviewing people and get good quality audio um, for your podcast. The price range for portable audio recorders can be, if you're getting a good one, <laughs> that has uh, the functionality that I mentioned of the Zoom H4n. Um, you can get them as low as $200, or if you find them used, you can get them for like 160 bucks which again is, is, is pretty good for if you're investing in it and using it long-term to continue to create the content that you want to create. So yeah, that's a portable recorder. Hey, if you really like the content here on Calpin Creations, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as we're talking about the best recording setups for podcasting, I have another video that talks about the five bad podcasting practices that you want to avoid when creating your podcast. So be sure to check out that video. Now let's get back to the list. And the last way that people typically uh, record their podcast is by using something that's considered an all-in-one podcasting kit. And a popular example of that is the Rode Rodecaster Pro. This is for more high-end professional type podcasts. This is pretty much a podcast recording studio in a box. Equipment like this is definitely an investment made by those seriously interested in podcasting. Whether you're doing a solo podcast or you have a team of folks you meet up with every time you record. The drawback is you will need to have additional mics to record into the, the podcasting kit. But you can do all kinds of cool stuff with a, with a, a podcasting kit like, like a Rodecaster Pro. If you're, you know, listening to your favorite podcast and they're adding sounds on the fly or things like that, they're more than likely using something like the Rodecaster Pro, which gives you all kinds of cool features that mimic what you may hear on, you know, a daily radio show. That's the whole concept. We're going to give you a tool and equipment that you can create and host your own radio show. But more often than not, people use it to create podcasts. And again, this a podcasting kit is a worthy investment especially if you're trying to do podcasting professionally full-time and you want, you know, top of the line kind of stuff. The Rode Rodecaster Pro starts around $600. And if you're trying to get a bundle, which comes with microphones and all that kind of stuff, that can be close to about $1,000. So it's definitely a worthy investment if you're seriously interested in podcasting. So those are the major ways that people typically record their podcasts, whether it's using their phone, using a USB microphone, using a, an external mic and an audio interface, or a portable recorder, or an all-in-one podcasting kit like the Rodecaster Pro. All of these are excellent and can help you to produce your podcast. And depending on what you have planned for your podcast will ultimately determine what might work best for you. But my suggestion for those who are just getting started and are interested in podcasting, I would recommend trying to get a USB microphone and starting with that. And if you have the budget to invest in that, again, you can get a decent USB microphone to help you get started. 
around $30. That way you'll be able to start your solo podcast. And from there, as you increase your ability and stuff like that, you'll have the opportunity to branch out into more diverse podcasting types. So yeah, if you're looking to get into podcasting and you got, you know, somewhat of a budget, I would recommend getting a USB microphone. But as I've mentioned before in previous videos, all you re really need to get started is your cell phone. Thanks for watching another video. I really appreciate you guys. Calpen Creations is dedicated to helping you start making quality audio content on a budget. Until next time, if you've liked this video, like, share, and subscribe to the channel and uh, make sure the notifications are on. And remember, cost does not have to stop you from creating. So go make something. See you guys.